Hello everyone, I'm Barkley Hunter, and this is the conclusion of our MATLAB and Simulink tutorial series for Best Robotics. In this final episode, we'll be covering several different topics that we haven't covered in earlier episodes, as well as a number of tips and tricks to help with your programming experience. First, we will look at setting up a program for simulation. This is one of the most important features of Simulink in the Best Robotics competition because it allows you to ensure that your program is properly created before actually uploading to the robot. All of the simulation material that you need is in the Utilities tab of the VEX library. Over here you can see that we have a fully operational program made up of an arcade style steering system an arm control system using the other free joystick and a simple button operated latch for a hand. Now we'll set this up to simulate and ensure that it's correctly designed. To begin we'll need to open some inputs and outputs for our simulation blocks to connect to. We do this on all of the input blocks by double clicking to access their options and selecting to add input ports for simulation and add output ports for simulation. We'll have to do this with each individual block. Once this is finished, we can add the actual simulation blocks. For joysticks, we will need a variable input. This will allow you to slide a number bar back and forth to select how far the joystick is pushed in either direction. For the variable inputs to work correctly, they need a constant of 1 in their input. We do this for each individual joystick. And then for buttons, you simply need a toggle block. The toggle block can be double clicked during simulation to change the value between a 0 and a 1. Now for the outputs. For our steering system, we will use a field simulator block that will allow us to visualize the steering of our robot. We will also use displays to show us the exact speed of each of our motors. You can, select, you can select to output the same block to multiple blocks simply by dragging from the input of the second block to the original output line. For all of the non-steering functions, we will only need a display. For motors, the display will show the speed. For servos, it will show their angle. Once you have a fully prepared simulation program, you begin the simulation by simply clicking the play or run button at the top of the screen. MATLAB will then proceed through several different actions that you can see at the bottom of the screen. This will take some time the first time that it's done, but then later should speed up once you've simulated multiple times. Here we can see our graph plot for the field simulator. 
if we double click these variable input blocks, we will also be given the slider to select what numbers that they represent. Now we're fully prepared to simulate the program. As you can see, if I double click the toggle block, it changes from a 0 to a 1, and the display now shows the servo at its maximum angle of 60. If I double click it again, it returns to 0. And because of the latch, the angle will remain at 60 until I double click again to return it to 1. Then the display returns to 0 for an inactive servo. For a variable input, you can see that as I slide the slider in either direction, the speed in this display changes. As the slider goes further towards the end, the speed increases. And while it's in the middle, speed is variable. Now we can take a look at the field simulator. If we set the forward and backwards axis of our arcade style steering system to one of its max values, we can see that the motors begin to run in a forward direction. If we change our left and right turning output, we can also see as some of the motors reduce speed to create turning. However, at this time, the field simulator only seems to be registering turning, which is an abnormal behavior and possibly just a bug with the current version of Simulink that I'm running. In its normal state, it will also show as the robot drives straight ahead. Once you're finished with your simulation and satisfied with all functions that are working as planned, you simply press the stop button back at the top of the screen and it will exit you back out to a state where you can continue editing your program or proceed from there. If you are ready to proceed from there, then the way that you can download your program to your VEX robot is to use the connection cord that will be included with your Best Robotics kit to plug your VEX Cortex microcontroller into your computer. And once it's installed any necessary drivers and hardware, you can install new programs simply by pressing this top right button that's labeled Deploy to Hardware. The process of deploying to hardware takes several minutes and you may receive errors. If the errors are of a kind that you cannot rectify within the program, then you will have to let MATLAB Best Robotics Support know at their email address, which I will be providing in the description of this video. Most errors, however, will simply be things within the program such as disconnected inputs or outputs or other simple problems that you should be able to fix easily by following the instructions in the error message. Now that we've looked at simulation and compiling, we'll look at one other thing from last week's video, which was using the buttons to control the up and down movement of a motor. I've prepared an example program over here demonstrating what the results should be of a program designed to work in this way. This is our tank style steering system which is the reason behind our needing to use buttons for a motor since the tank steering system uses both of the joysticks on the controller. Now to build this logic system that you see here you have to use the if block and the if action subsystem block, neither of which are found within the VEX library. To access these and other blocks, like the merge block that you see here, 
click on this button labeled Library Browser in the top toolbar. This will open the main Simulink Library Browser that has a very large number of other blocks for just about any use that you could possibly need. Simply search through their defined categories and you should be able to find a block to suit any need your robot could have. The if and if action subsystem blocks are within the ports and subsystems category. The if block is the main logic block of this system and is constructed simply by defining the number of inputs which for this system would be two, one for the up button and one for the down button and then entering in your expressions to label which states are triggered under what conditions. For example here U1 represents the up block and U2 represents the down block. This if expression states that if the up block is pressed and not the down block then it should trigger a certain state. As you can see, to enter an equal signs in expressions such as these, you need to actually enter two equal signs in a row. And to enter an AND, you simply use an ampersand from the 7 key on a standard keyboard. The else if expression is the opposite of the if expression if the down button is pressed without the up. Also, there is an else condition, meaning that if any other condition is the case, such as neither button being pressed or both being pressed at the same time. If we return back to the main program, we can see the three subsystems, as defined, plugged in to the main block. These arrows appear differently since they are state arrows, but you actually draw them the same way and they change their appearance the first time you simulate or compile them. For the if subsystem triggered by only the up button being pressed, we give it an upwards movement through a constant plugged into the system. For downwards movement, we do the same with the else if expression, and with the else, we simply give it zero so that the arm remains motionless. We combine all of these inputs into a merge, which will then output whatever active state is currently feeding the merge to your motor and cause the arm to run as desired. If we take a look at it here in simulation, we can see that if the up button is toggled, the motor runs upwards. If we turn it back off, then the motor stops. If the down button is toggled, the motor then runs downwards until the button is released again. You can also see that if we were to press both buttons, the motor would once again return to zero. Now we will stop this simulation as well and go over a few final tips and tricks to close out this tutorial. One trick related to the tank style steering system is to invert one of the joysticks in order to ensure that they both work correctly. In its basic form like this, m unless the motors are oriented in a particular way, the motors will sometimes run in opposite directions when both joysticks are placed forward. This is very confusing to control, and so to correct for this, we simply need a gain block from the VEX library math library. If we place a game block on whatever joystick is running in reverse and give the gain a value of negative one, it will successfully invert the signal from the joystick to the motor. As you saw just a moment ago, you can place blocks onto existing arrows simply by dragging them onto the arrow and dropping them and it will automatically place them along the path. Some other tricks related to moving blocks if you hold down control as you begin to click and drag a block you'll make an exact copy of that block to place elsewhere. Also if you hold down shift while beginning to click and drag a block 
you will remove it from any arrows that it was connected to. If you continue to hold down shift while moving the block, it will lock you on the horizontal and vertical axes from the block starting position, allowing you to make more grid-like patterns far easier than simply dragging them around. Throughout this series, we've covered all the basics you'll need to know for the best robotics competition in its upcoming season. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the comments or to contact MathWorks through their email once the season has begun if you have any problems with your program. Good luck to everyone in the upcoming season of Best Robotics, and thank you for watching.